Essex Record Office is the official storehouse of the county's writings. Here is a building, an organization, and a school service which can be of great use to classroom teaching if properly used. The headquarters of Essex Record Office is in Victoria Road South, Chelmsford, and there are branches in Southend and Colchester. Essex Record Office is part of Essex County Council, but it is a safe store for many interesting books and papers. With over four and a half million items, this is an important resource. However, it is a reference collection and the trick lies in mobilising this material for school use. In the first place, there is the personal visit. Here we have Genevieve from the County High School for Girls, being introduced to the collections by Miss Janet Smith, Principal Archivist for Public Services. Right, so you're going to be wanting to see what material we've got in the Essex Record Office by way of school log books, education committee minutes, and yeah. that sort of thing. Right. Well, in a little while, I'll take you and show you how the catalogues and the indexes work. Thank you. But first of all, I think it's worth making one or two general points about research here. And it's very important to remember that before you start using original documents, you must have done as much research as you can from printed sources, okay. so that you've got the background of your topic worked out in advance, so that when you come to look at the documents, they will make sense to you. They will fit into the general picture, and you'll, you'll know how to approach them and how to use them. So after I had a short chat about the sorts of sources available, We'll go and have a look at the indexes and see exactly what material we've got on the Holstead area for the history of education. Okay. A sixth former undertaking research for an advanced level history examination is an obvious user of the Essex Record Office. Such a student would be able, with guidance, to use the indexes and the order slips and to cope with working in a controlled environment in which there is no talking and in which it is possible to sit next to a family historian or a visiting American professor. Younger students may visit, though clearly preparation is vital. Original historical documents mean much more when the background reading has been done. Moreover, Essex Record Office does not normally accept groups within its search room, though a nearby conference room will hold up to 15 students. Once a writing has been identified, the order goes downstairs to the muniment room, or strong room. Here, in a constant temperature of 65 degrees Fahrenheit, are the documents, safely kept. The store is burglar proof, flood proof, fire proof, bomb proof, in fact as secure against the many enemies of writings as it is humanly possible to be. parish registers, poor law union records, the accounts of local businesses, school diaries or log books, drawings, historic maps, photographs and taped reminiscences are here. In them it is possible to discover what Richard Aldworth spent his pocket money on in 1759, or what the area around your school looked like in 1895, or how the pupils of Wooden Ferrers remained under their desks for 35 minutes as the Battle of Britain raged overhead on the 3rd of September, 1940. Peter works in his shirt sleeves all year round, in the even temperature, 
and is glad when we, the searchers, get our catalogue marks or references right. A letter or number in the wrong place on the order slip may mean the wrong document being brought laboriously from the shelves. On visiting Essex Record Office, the first port of call is the bookshop. Here other users may be met. The general public has access also. They too have to have proof of identity and acquire a reader's ticket. Modern security arrangements are in force. Electronic paging devices and closed circuit television cameras included. Coats have to be hung up and bags placed in the lockers provided. Essex Record Office has gained a fine reputation from its publications. These are at one-third discount to Essex County Council schools. Before we, the searchers, can get hold of a writing, it must be in good condition. The conservators, that is the binder and repairers, sometimes have quite a task. Here, at Old Court in Chelmsford, repairs are being made. The first loyalty of the Essex Record Office is to the safekeeping of its writings. Not all of its collections are owned by Essex County Council. The Church of England, other non-conformist churches and private individuals have all placed material here for safekeeping. It's a serious thing to be responsible for other people's treasures. However, helping you to do your own research amongst these and other materials is accepted now as an important part of the archivist's job. It's nice collecting. It's our job to collect here. We think collecting is good fun. Let's share the fun before we get down to the serious side of collecting. This is a facsimile copy exactly... Fortunately, in Essex, there is a service for schools which permits the use of originals within your classroom. At Lee Beck County Junior School on Canvey Island, a class of seven and eight-year-olds is being introduced to the joys and pitfalls of writing as part of their topic on toys and childhood by the advisory teacher for history and records. He is empowered by the county archivist to bring out into schools old books and writings for the day only. Copy as well. What I want you to do while the papers are coming around is think of your favorite number, no bigger than 16. What's your best number before 16? And then we'll look at the Book of Fates and it will tell you whom you're going to marry. Would you like to take the top one and pass the pile to your neighbour, please? Who's got a favourite number? Right, we'll start with you. You're a willing victim. When the extras come back, I'll have a look at one too. We're all looking at the same side if you find F12. Seven, at the top on the right. I'll leave my spectacles, I'm getting on a bit more with this. Any extras back there? Any extra papers you don't want? Just please. Thanks very much. All right, we're going to begin with you. What number did you want? Sixteen. Sixteen. Gentlemen, look at the column on the right. Ladies, look at the column on the left. 
16. Maybe you can help decide what his future wife will be. Now, you notice right away with an old piece of writing, you have some difficulties. What's the problem here? Can you read your answer, 16? Why is it difficult for him to read the answer? It's in joined up writing. That's right. That's not so easy to read. Any other problems with it? Please, please. You changed your mind. What's it? It's very small writing. It should be bigger. It would be easier to read. Another difficulty is... Please, please. The handwriting styles change over there. We have fashions in clothes. Some of you are much more fashionable than I am. And we have fashions in handwriting. And this is different from the present day. So we'll have to help you with that. It's actually inside that little shield shape, it's got a very amusing incident event that happened to Richard Oldworth, whose book this is. April the 5th, 1760, I swallowed a. What did he swallow? Did he make it out? Very good. He swallowed a marble. Now, if you turn over and look at what he spent his pocket money on, you'll find that marbles were bought by Richard, and he wrote it down. How many marbles did he buy? Can you find in that list? A dozen, good. Do you know how many a dozen is? Twelve. Twelve, good for you. So how many did he have left after he swallowed his marble? Eleven. Eleven, that's right. And hopefully he must have. And he went on to become a very wealthy man and owner of Audley End House and Lord Braybrook. So presumably he survived his swallowing of his marble. But those aren't the only things he's bought. Can you read down that page? This painting from the Wallace Collection in Manchester Square is a favourite of mine because it's about writing. But it's, it sort of illustrates what you're about to do. Like the gentleman in this painting who's doing something he shouldn't, uh, you're going to be peeping over the shoulders of history. Looking at, writing. at the other end of the county, in Saffron Walden High School, and at the other end of the age range, 16 and 17 year old students prepare to do research for advanced level history paper AEB 673. I'm afraid I've buried you under a welter of uh, photocopies. What I'd like to do now is clear these from your desks and make sure that you have only a pencil. Could you put your files and bags and baggages to one side, please? And we'll have a look at the selection. You know what I'm document. With a term's notice, your pupils can be exposed to the delights of original material dating from circa 1200 AD. Aids for Searchers 4 is a leaflet which sets out the usual conditions and constraints. Well, good morning, Mr. Harris. Good morning, um, as I said in my letter, we felt that our school records would do better in your keeping, the safety, and therefore these two children are brought them along this morning. Let's have a look at each other. The traffic is not all one way. Schools have something to put back into the pot. As well as being document readers or researchers, we are occasionally document depositors. Here is Mr. Peter Bibby and a couple of pupils of St. Peter's CE Primary School, Coggershall, speaking to Mr. Richard Harris, the Deputy County Archivist, about placing the school's own old diaries, admission registers and manager's minute books in Essex Record Office. Of course, such material can be temporarily borrowed back for school use. And in the meantime, it is very safe. The instruction in this school is well imparted in every standard. Is that still the The instruction is well imparted. Well yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about I believe them, I do believe them. These are very fine, very fine series of records going back, going back to the early day. Um, Certainly, I think, I think uh, it was a very proper decision to deposit them. And um, 
Well, as you know, any time if you wish to borrow them back, you can, given reasonable measures. Yes. Um, but they will certainly be very well looked after and, and pretty well used. Well, that's nice. Well, well, there is nice such, such a great responsibility, yeah. you know, that really I'm now glad to get rid of, mm, well, having studied them. You can be assured that they will be well looked after here and, and prized and treasured. Thank you very much for bringing it. I'm glad to see you. To get teaching materials out of Essex Record Office, it is not necessary to visit or be visited. The transcript and facsimile service can help greatly. There are over 1,300 items freely available to schools, and the various lists on Law and Order, or Farming in Essex, or Essex at War, or Highways and Byways, can be summoned using List 1. Simply write to Essex Records Office School Service about the nature of your inquiry and we will be pleased to provide this material to hand. Essex Record Office is not a place where old people go to look up the dead, but is instead a light, airy place wherein Essex finds out about itself and its place in the world, using all the state-of-the-art technology. Here is the BBC Doomsday System on Laserdisc, which is also available for teacher use by appointment. Finally, we close with the view of the search room at work. Here is Mr. Raymond Powell, editor of the Victoria County History of Essex, looking through a bundle of papers. While nearby, Mr. Stan Jarvis, librarian and Essex author, examines some writings kept on microfilm. Properly researched, there is interesting stuff here for you and your school. For all of us, in fact.